Hello, this is David D. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who have been working for decades outside the mainstream, who've identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You're, gonna have, you're not going to find anything like this on YouTube, so go, do, right, go right down below and click on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Well, on Fridays, I do a live YouTube broadcast, and oftentimes during those times during those talks and during those interactions with my subscribers live, I come up with something uh, interesting to do a talk about, and I certainly did. And, and on top of that, I came up with a revelation about one of the great scientists of our time, one who was greatly admired by lots of people, and that is him, Nikola Tesla himself, the great scientist who worked a lot with electricity and uh, was trying at the end of his life to transmit power across the universe to make life a better place. And of course, that's what uh, all tinkerers want to do. And of course, uh, let's just look at him a little bit from my perspective. Of course, he has a large fan club. And why? Because he was a tinkerer, tinkerer, and there are many tinkerers in the world. People like to work in their garage, work in their laboratories, building things and doing things, trying to make something useful for the world. Hey, what's, not, what's more noble than that? Nothing, of course. You want to give and contribute to the human race and make it a better place, of course. Even I am a tinkerer. That's not of course, but I am a tinkerer. Yeah, I build a pipe worker from uh, clothespins, uh, fishing line, inner tube from a bicycle, an old vacuum cleaner in wood, and wood, and old keys from a piano, and voila, the whole thing worked. I also made a time-lapse photography sh machine that would, my gosh, it had a turntable, and it would go around. It had electrified, it was all mechanical. It was electrified clock with little feelers there and when the hand would hit on a feeler to trip a relay that relay would then uh, turn it on and then turn it off on the way around coasting around and it lift up an arm and it take a picture on an eight millimeter film camera that's how old I am and uh, it worked quite well so I love tinkering well I used to uh, I loved tinkering I'm doing other things these days uh, but of course uh, Nick Nicholas Tesla has this history with Edison it's a fascinating story uh, everyone's read it it was the day David versus Goliath, uh, direct current versus alternating current. And of course, Edison wanted uh, direct current and Ed uh, uh, Tesla wanted alternating. Guess which one won out? And that's what makes one of the reasons he's a hero. It was uh, his alternating current that actually won out. But of course, Edison made all the money. He exploited everything. And that's why you have this tragic story. Of course, uh, Tesla tried to build these huge transmitters of, of energy and this story he died like a pauper alone uh, whereas of course Edison was was a great hero and uh, reaped the rewards of his work and all that of course yeah he, he was good at business and all that but anyways uh, you've got people admire so much you got Tesla cars I love I want one I, I can't afford one but uh, Elon Musk is a tinkerer and of course he said hey I'm gonna make a Tesla car because it's electric and he worked a lot with electricity was Tesla onto something? And that's what I'm going to talk about. But I'm going to talk about a revelation I had. And here are the two things I came up with during my talk, uh, my live YouTube. And what is that? Well, Tesla, in my opinion, has an invisible problem or an invisibility problem. No, he wasn't talking. I'm not talking about being invisible or he invented vis invisibility. Tesla had this idea that the meeting he was medium he was working with was basically invisible, invisible to most all matter. It would travel through stuff. I think he had this thing, this idea deep down inside, which a lot of people who tinker with and who who admire Tesla, that this these electromagnetic waves, this these these waves of energy, whatever you want to call it, were just like they just go through anything. It's just like it's look, I can move stuff through it. I can send signals right through me, and look at me, nothing stopping me. It's almost like magical. It's like um, invisible. I think deep down inside he just thought that it penetrated everything it was only caught by caught by certain materials so that was one of the great revelations i had i think he really saw the medium he was trying to work with it was pretty much invisible it goes through anything and that of course will lead you to some ideas and some directions that may not be correct 
But let's keep going forward. Uh, Tesla's all, Tesla in also, uh, in, in a revelation that I had, has an infinite problem. The same idea that was invisible goes for Well, it also goes forever. Well, transmission of power over long distances. Uh, of course, there's a limit to the discus. He knew that. There's a limit to the power. He knew that. But Tesla was really thinking infinity with no loss. Why? It's because mainstream science, big science, talks about light. And when they talk about light, and big, they, it goes to speed of sea forever in a straight line and that's why we can for 10 billion light years away we can still see a star because that stuff is going at sea unimp unimpeded going through empty space well there's a problem with that and that problem is if you talk to critical thinkers today there are many people who talk about uh when yes there's infinite space but nothing borkert talks about it glenn borkert if you want to uh, read about that, here's a, a video about uh, some of the stuff with infinity right up there. And uh, you can take a look at that. But he says very clearly that nothing in the universe can travel. If it's light, it's got to be something. It can't travel unimpeded with no loss of energy, with no loss of whatever, going in the same speed forever. It just can't happen. And of course, there's also the idea of tired light. Where does this come in? Well, everywhere we look, there's a red shift and someone came up with the idea there's a big bang. Of course, big bang, in my opinion, and many critical think thinkers' opinions, and many people outside mainstream big science, they don't believe the big bang. They believe that the, the universe is always, you know, things are born, things are... Anyways, that's where we get the idea of tired light. The reason we see redshift isn't because things are moving away and everything exploded from one and we just happen to be in the middle. It happens because that tired light gets tired, meaning it... Yeah, it's not a thing. It doesn't go... It's not a living thing, no. But the idea is light does not go infinitely uh, forever. doesn't go forever at the same speed. There is effect on those kinds of things. So those are the two things that we have. The idea that Tesla thinks that things are in sort of this energy, sort of invisible, goes through everything. And that this idea, they can go a long distance light. For instance, it goes million, and during his time, he knew that light could travel millions and millions of light years. So I think that's what he had in his gut. And he was trying to work with that. And uh, we'll talk about why that failed. Well, let's look at some modern people who are, are like Tesla, and they have a, a, a thing called, a group called Tesla Tech. Great group, Steve Elvers, my applaud to them. These are real tinkerers. They are real experimentalists. They have an annual conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They also have satellite conferences around the United States. These guys are great. They don't, they don't do theoretical anything. They build stuff they see stuff if you can't measure it you can't do something with it it ain't real nothing theoretical there and uh they're quite an active and strong group they're creative they're ingenious they have some they have great critical thinkers in their group uh we uh in the mpa or cmps had several conferences with them in the uh, the first part of the uh uh, 2000s, uh, there, 2008, 2009, 2010, around that time, we, we were uh, had some conferences with them in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it was fantastic. They, uh, I love their work. They work with real stuff. That's really important to me. And we are all fascinated, the Tesla Tech people as well, but we are all fascinated by our minds being able to manipulate the universe around us. That is what makes a tinkerer. And these guys uh, and these guys and gals are tinkerers to the max, but I, I would really call them experimentalists. Tinkering is the idea that, hey, I'm gonna play with it in my mind, then uh, and then I'm gonna really try to do something with it. And they have developed their own vocabulary using words like energy, space, time, and there's a lot of other vocabulary that we don't use as real things, but oftentimes they'll talk about it as real because they're manipulating it just like Tesla. So hats off to them, and those are the people uh, continuing his work. But let's look at what goes wrong, perhaps, with Tesla's work specifically. Well, Nikola Tes Tesla um, revisited. I hope I spelled his name. I think I did. If I did, please forgive me. Uh, he was a great experimentalist. Yes, he was. His problem was the energy he imagined was in general, in his mind, invisible and infinite. And I'm not saying that he thought it was 100%, uh, 
But deep down inside, I think that's what he thought because it goes through things. So his idea was, well, maybe this is something maybe I can transmit. Maybe the universe doesn't do this. Maybe we don't have stars sending out these kinds of things. We, mankind, are, or womankind, or humankind, we can think of stuff to manipulate things and send out signals that maybe other beings in the universe will do too. But I can send this power out everywhere. And um, he, as did everyone else, had no physical model of the universe at that time. And even the even big science does not have it. They call it the standard model, which is sort of a joke. It's not a model at all. Uh, even if you look at what, you know, uh, protons and neutrons, electrons, all those things are made up of quarks or uh, the nucleons are made of, I'm sorry, electron is a unique particle, sorry. Uh, but uh, like a proton, it's made up of quarks and uh, those, those kinds of things, those, when, when you look at the picture of it, they have no idea physically what that is. They have no idea what an electron is physically. They have, it has charge and it has all these things and they attract because they say it's a fundamental thing. They don't have a model. And that's the problem with Nikola Tesla. He didn't have a model. Without a model, he and Everyone had no, had and have no chance of fulfilling or debunking his dream of sending out energy long distances. Now we have models ourselves and we can, I, I will tell you at the end of these conclusions, but tinkers continue to tinker and dream, but mostly, almost all without a model. And that's where we need to change things. If you're in Tesla tech and you uh, have, maybe you have your own model, maybe, maybe you're doing more because you do. But if you don't, if you are a, an experimentalist, a tinkerer who m tries to manipulate stuff and you have this hypothesis like Tesla that I can send energy long distances, well, what model are you using? Are you using uh, an ether model? That is, you know, light and all that stuff is transmitted and just like waves, uh, waves in the air transmit sound and air. So we have ether and light goes through our waves through ether. Do you have a particle model where part uh, waves come in? Waves are part waves of particles coming at you and they travel through space. Are you a, a, a lattice model where where you have waves transmitted through a more fixed lattice where things are really in one place and the movement is sort sort of a little bit like uh, um, ether, but different. It's not collisions. Um, so what is it you have? Well, that is the problem. Now, if you look at today's models, the ether models or the particle model or lattice models, and you talk with people like Borkert, the answer is going to be, uh, for instance, uh, is going to be that you can't transmit stuff uh, infinitely. It's not as ubiquitous and and, and goes long distances. A model like my father and I's, for example, it's the only one I really can talk about, will say that no, you, he's not going to be able to transmit what he wants in that power to give you that power that you need at long distances. It ain't going to happen because our model says that. I'm not going to explain that. That's not what I'm here for. But all I'm saying is that you got to have a model to say, yes, I can do that. So what does it mean? Is he tried and he tried and he tried and he tried. He was a really creative mind. He was a really creative and, and tinkerer. He was a great experimentalist, but he didn't get what he want, wanted done. And that's either because the model of the universe that someday we will be using, that is a real physical model, will tell us why you couldn't do that or why you can. And we just haven't found it yet. Regardless, Nikola Tesla was very inspirational. He has uh, inspired many people to get out there and be experimentalists, which is great. But I would say to all of you who are experimentalists, who are tinkerers, people who are in Tesla tech as well, if you have not already, is to really start thinking about if you're trying to manipulate something, we need to get models of what that is so we know how to manipulate it. Of course, you know, don't take my word for it, even though in this case, I think these conclusions that I came to are really at least, I think, I hope they're enlightening to you. They were certainly to me this idea that he really had this deep down inside that this stuff is you goes, just goes like light everywhere can go. All we have to do is find how to do that. And it goes through everything. No obstacles. That core of side idea that's invisible 
and infinitely, again, in the general terms, and no model to understand that that even has a chance. If we have a model of the universe, we're going to be able to use that to tell us if we can do what he wants to do. But without it, we're doomed to know one way or the other, or until maybe somebody finds it. One of the tinkerers in Tesla Tech finds it, and you go, ha ha. And then, of course, we look at one of our models and go, yep, our model says you can do that. Or nope, it doesn't, so maybe our model's wrong. But regardless, don't take my word for it. I'm David DeHilser. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm David DeHilser. I say that all the time. Get it wrong. Uh, I am your science therapist trying to get you the promised land of becoming science woke. Ciao for now.